Um, hello everyone, my name is Dina Philip and I'm a special needs enabler and a uh, faculty of uh, language and communication with Indus International School, Bangalore. Uh, my paper is titled Remote Learning and Special Education During the COVID-19 Pandemic. It's an exploratory study. Um, before we get into the rationale of the study, um, I believe that um, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, paved way for quite a lot of uh, inequalities in the society. Um, particularly in terms of uh, looking at access to quality education. Uh, while we had some students who benefited from the distance learning program, the shift to distance learning program, we've also had quite a lot of other students who um, who are left behind, who are neglected. Um, and I am particularly talking about students with disabilities, students with special needs who are forced to um, fit in to this particular mode of learning. Um, now, one of the one of the other problems that we also see is that schools, these special schools have been trying so hard to adapt old educational model into an online environment, which which makes it very frustrating for the children to adapt because uh, they are not comfortable or they have never been exposed to such modes of learning in the past. Um, in the beginning, um, we've had we saw that the government was taking a call in terms of uh, whether there needs to be online classes conducted for uh, students with special needs, um, the number of hours that needs to be allotted. So there was a lot of um, um, decision making um, happening around uh, this, but eventually when it kick started, um, it it went fine. It went fine. Um, students were able to manage. Students were very happy to see their teachers. Um, they were very much interested in the computer technology. Um, but eventually, uh, I, I would rather say gradually, uh, when teachers started delivering lectures, when teachers started uploading resources, conducting assessments, um, engaging with students online, uh, it became very harder for these children to understand what was happening um, and uh, to kind of um, fall in place with this model of learning um, because most children with disabilities, they attend schools through this particular program called the individualized educational program, which that outlines the services that they must receive in order to um, access free and appropriate education. And when I say appropriate education, um, inclusive education, they have the right to education, um, equity. We're talking about equity. So um, it is also designed uh, by a student's special needs team with inputs from parents. Um, but unfortunately, in the case of uh, remote learning, uh, all this is not taken into consideration and there is no scope for teachers to sit and devise um, particular goals or uh, particular plans that are custom made to meet their requirements, to meet these children's requirements which only makes them which only makes the students become more anxious withdrawn uh, and um, i think the major flaw here is that there is a failure in terms of the e-learning apps that we are using uh, they are not capable of providing appropriate access to both academic and the social uh, emotional learning or the necessary services support modification that are essential for these children's education. Um, because um, in a survey that I had conducted, I had asked around 16 schools in Bangalore, um, which was the applications that they were using, and most of them um, stated WebEx and Zoom as uh, the applications that they were using to um, deliver uh, instructions or um, content to their students. Very few of them responded to Microsoft Teams. Now, if we look at uh, Zoom, if we look at WebEx, there are no inbuilt features that predominantly enable children with special needs to uh, benefit from. There is there is no features that helps these particular um, students cope up with content or learn differently or learn with any sort of support. Um, but if you look at Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Teams has been um, slightly thoughtful that way because um, there is some sort of meaningful access and engagement that is created and sustained 
through one of their features called the immersive reader. Uh, particularly, this is seen to be very beneficial for teachers who are teaching language, um, particularly again when they are looking at reading and comprehension. Um, so using some qualitative methods and experiments, um, taking into consideration, observing their, um, their levels of reading, uh, the paces which they're reading, the, the ways in which they're able to read, um, taking a look at the kind of assessments and their kind of assignments that they've been able to um, deliver at the end of a session. Um, it did show that students were able to read and visualize information. Um, and what happens here is the information is retained. There is some sort of retention that is happening and information is not diminishing. In a normal setup, you would just see students sitting there, not able to make sense of the content and thereby there is no sort of retention that is taking place because you just have a PPT, you just have some images that is used, but it doesn't really help because these are uh, technologies that have been mundane and they're outdated and children need something that is very static. It needs to be, it, they, the medium needs to engage with them. And um, which is why I believe that immersive reader has been able to take into consideration their comprehension um, and the fact that, you know, that they, they have problems with reading. Um, so if you see immersive reader, immersive reader is basically this free inbuilt feature that Microsoft Teams has that dictates speech to students. It um, it blocks everything out and it helps them to focus one, but it fo helps them to focus one line. Um, and it also helps them to um, identify parts of speech and screen. Um, it avoids visual crowding in terms of being able to space the fonts and lines. Um, it also breaks words into syllables. So uh, thereby enabling or thereby improving pronunciation and um, students have the freedom of flexibility to change the color size and make it more legible for them so that it is so that they can improve on their comprehension and reading skills um, and also one of the one of the um, best feature particularly for these children is even if the teacher is not able to explain um, a concept there is something called as a picture dictionary to visualize definitions. So children do not have to wait to ask the teacher the meaning of a certain word. They can just click on the word and it shows them um, visual definitions. Thereby, um, it also helps them uh, clarify information. So um, I will just show you. Yeah, so here. So uh, if you take a look at this particular if this, at the screen here, students can just click on the word and it also shows them what it means. What is the meaning? Um, and if you see the layout, it's very well spaced. There's a lot of use of colors um, and it's um, it's very nicely spaced out. There's no crowding. So um, the layout is very well made, taking into consideration that these are children who get distracted with overloading of information. So very minimal information, but at the same time, there is quite a lot of multimedia features that is being used. So if you see here, um, there is a play button and the minute you hit on play, there is a voice assistance and the voice assistance begins to read. You can also control the pace of the voice assistant. So everything is flexible and um, the students can control the pace. They can control um, the manner in which the content is put, put out. So um, they have the freedom and flexibility to do it as per um, their convenience as per their needs. Um, also, um, while this uh, particular um, paper and experiment it was uh, experiment was conducted, it was seen particularly in language classes that they can clearly hear the passage that is being dictated. Um, they are able to make sense of the words, particularly because it's being broken down into syllables and uh, the pronunciation is made easier. The text is made available to them easier. And um, most of these children, they learn English in schools and they're still learning English because there is a lot in terms of grammar that they have to um, um, still learn. So what happens is Microsoft Teams has enabled this feature through Immersive Reader um, 
to translate instruction into a language that they are more comfortable or more confident using. So they have the freedom to just translate the content um, and the voice assistants would just continue reading that particular uh, language, uh, sorry, that instruction in their mother tongue or in any language that they are comfortable with. So these are quite impressive features that has been built, taking into consideration that there are students or there might be students who might need that additional support um, in order to uh, meet their academic goals. Now, um, immersive reader as a feature connects the text to students with visual impaired um, who are visually impaired. Um, it helps them with um, pronunciation practices. It provides um, visual and audio inputs, giving all students, particularly students with um, dyslexia, the multi sensory experience that they need to ingrain the word into their vocabulary. They need this multi sensory um, experience to be able to retain information, to be able to connect information without which information does not stick through. Uh, it just diminishes. So most of these children with learning disabilities, they thrive on multi sensory experiences, which most of the online uh, e learning platforms don't offer. And um, this is the only application, particularly taking into consideration most of the schools that are using um, online platforms to deliver instructions. Microsoft Teams is the only application that has built in this create uh, built in this multi sensory input in order to build that kind of an experience for students to be able to connect with information. Um, now, uh, the the paper also looks at how there is a need. There is a need for um, a educational accommodation. Yeah, so educational accommodation should be made for students um, with disabilities to ensure that students build organization skills, sequencing skills, editing, decision making, self determination skills um, that help them, empowers them and allows them to demonstrate their ability to learn rather than just be frustrated by structures that only exclude them or um, um, only deprive them of um, an information or education that they equally have right to access to. Thank you.